Okay, let's keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, the name and lights, Warren Beatty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I want to, thank you. I want to tell you how happy I am to come here tonight to honor a great film editor who is also an Academy Award winning screenwriter and now teaches at the University of Southern California School of uh, Cinematic Arts, Bobby Jones. <clears throat> you know, when I think of Bobby, I think first of family. Uh, Bobby himself and his father, Harmon Jones, and Bobby's daughter, Leslie Jones, are all Academy-nominated film editors. And um, I know that <laughs> I don't have to tell this group that a great film editor is, in fact, not only an author, but uh, which I must say Bobby has always been, uh, but also a kind of a parent of, uh, of post-production. Uh, and uh, so I've been lucky enough to be part of uh, Bobby's uh, cutting room family. Um, we did shampoo together. We did Heaven Can Wait. We did, uh, thank you, thank you. And we did Love Affair. We did Bullworth together. And, um, and then 12 years ago, Bobby decided to teach at USC and deal more with the uh, study and investigation of film as an art form. Uh, why Bobby would want to put aside the totally sane, intelligent, sensible, easygoing, plas placid atmosphere of our Hollywood movie business <laughs> and its uh, purity, uh, predictability, and lack of pandering <laughs> is uh, puzzling to some of us uh, who have remained, but uh, every once in a while I ask uh, myself that could there be an element of uh, sanity in uh, stepping away from the uh, Hollywood movie business? Uh, I, I often think of uh, asking uh, Sylvia Hirsch-Jones, Bobby's beautiful wife, who is a noted psychotherapist, uh, <laughs> Or Haley Sussman, who's Bobby's second uh, daughter, who is also a psychotherapist. I uh, would like uh, to uh, talk to them about that. But I, I really would also like to discuss something else uh, with them, which is uh, my pain. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the pain of Bobby um, having done so many great movies uh, that I am not in. Um, I, I, why, why was I not in uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? I mean, what is it that I, it's not that I can't play black, you know, I, I uh, uh, why, why wasn't I in Coming Home? I, I'm, I'm as political as John Voight, and, uh, uh, and what about, uh, what about being there? What am I, I'm, I'm, I'm not as good as Shirley? I mean, what, uh, and uh, also, uh, the last detail, you know? I mean, Jack, 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 please, enough. Uh, <clears throat> paint your wagon, Clint Eastwood, please. I, I don't, uh, bound for glory, I used to hang out with Woody Guthrie. He was a friend of mine. Uh, he was a, uh, but, but what about Ship of Fools, Mad, Mad World, A Child is Waiting, Love Story, City Hall, Looking to Get Out, Days of Thunder, Bobby. How do you think not being in any of those movies makes me feel? I, uh, anyway, I think we should all take a, a look at some of these movies, and uh, I'll be thinking how they'd be with me in them, but you could uh, want to see them, not even if I'm not. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look.
Hello there. Thank you for such a rousing welcome. Uh, I want to thank the American Cinema Editors for honoring me and my body of work. Many of you deserve to be up here with me, and I'd like you to know that I feel privileged to be one of your representatives. Needless to say, I feel extremely grateful for being chosen for this Career Achievement Award, when for so many years, and even to this very day, I battle with the feeling that I really don't know what I'm doing creatively. <laughs> it's really tough to admit that, but I feel better that I did. <laughs> this is especially true for me in an art form that has no right or wrong. But if there is no right or wrong, how does one know which side, whether he or she is right? Does it matter? If I think about it too much, I'm confused and muddled. <laughs> so I rely on my instincts, work rapidly with a great degree of spontaneity. I do not listen to my head, only my gut. It was once said about me, it was written by a professor at Chapman University, that my gut is the ultimate arbiter of my craft. I believe my hero, Dee Dee Allen, worked in a similar fashion. As a young neophyte editor, I was lucky enough to work with two talented and successful directors of the time. A gut master himself, John Cassavetes, taught me how to get excited. The gut master, John Cassavetes, taught me how to get excited at being anywhere in the vicinity of film. He also told me how to cut with my heart. Stanley Kramer shared his classic filmmaking style with me through comedy and drama, a deeply satisfying and valuable experience. I'm grateful to Arthur Hiller, whose encouragement allowed me to feel, completely, feel complete freedom in the cutting room. Of the eight films I did with Arthur, six were filmed on location, and I worked in Hollywood. So I had to let Arthur know if anything was amiss with the dailies. He didn't know that I didn't know what was, what was or wasn't a miss. <laughs> but I bluffed it, and lucky, luckily for me, Arthur is a very talented director who didn't have much need for my miss report. <laughs> and how do I speak about my time with Hal Ashby? He was the man. Hal and I had no stated theory of editing. We were so attuned to each other that we would, we would know we'd do it and not dissect the meaning or depth of a scene. We either worked or it didn't, and we'd move on. Two jolly co-conspirators. Those, those were some of the most magical moments of my editing career. After reading a spec script I, a spec script I'd written, Hal presented me with a huge surprise. He hired me to adapt Saul Bellow's classic novel, Henderson and Rain came for the screen. A, su a successful adaptation, but it went nowhere. But it was a start. Wanting script work done on his upcoming film, Bound for Glory, Ashby hired me to do rewrites as well as edit the movie with Pembroke Herring. Hal hired me to write a number of additional product, projects, including Coming Home and Being There. We were halfway through and. We were halfway through another, yet another screenplay when Hal fell ill. He requested that I visit him. I saw him for several times a week as his health gradually deteriorated. Hal and I had a deep and personal bond, and there will be fewer surprises now. By the time I started editing with Warren Beatty, I thought I'd used up all my insecurities. Wrong again. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Working with Warren was like re-entering the birth canal. <laughs> he pushed relentlessly, <laughs> gut-wrenching indeed. 
I know he was grabbing for a gem that for me many times was out of reach. I became frustrated, angry, and determined. I went home on edge, unsettled, edited in my dreams, and was stretched beyond my comfort zone. <laughs> but then, after reaching remarkable and wonderful collaborations between the two of us, we walked above the earth. Warren, I, Warren and I were a hell of a good pair. Warren and I were in cahoots. I want to say to all of you who share this marvelous career as editors that those moments of panic when you feel you don't know what you're doing is a time when creativity is born and it may be necessary in a passage to the soul of the cut. Needless to say, I couldn't have flourished, flourished for all those years without certain people in my life, a few of whom are sitting at our table. My wife, Sylvia, the love of my life, who, when I am lost, she finds me. When I need support, she is there. <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> Sylvia has held my heart for 52 years. Having to deal with me, guts, and nightmares. <laughs> my love, I will cherish you always. Our daughter, Leslie, is in no way a chip off the old block, but her own person with her own sensitivity and creative depth. Her list of credits and her work speaks for itself. Seeing her excel in that capacity and being a part of it was a priceless gift. But most of all, she's my kid and I'm her dad. <laughs> also at the table is our youngest daughter, Haley Sussman. She has a welcoming heart and a steadfast per perseverance in expressing her love to family, friends, and in her practice as a psychologist. But most of all, she's my kid and I'm her dad. <laughs> <laughs> Our daughter's husbands, two terrific bonus sons, Josh Sussman and John Lee, bring us such joy and peace of mind in their devotion to our family. And my bonus brother and sister, Barry and Carol Hirsch, our sidekicks for over 50 years, whose generous generosity and love I am very grateful. Our good friends Debbie Shaw and Jim Perkins are here to probe my weaknesses so they can somehow beat me at words with friends. <laughs> and of course, the very talented Annette Benning and Warren Beatty. <laughs> I'm very moved and honored by your presence. It goes without saying that the contributions of my numerous assistants over 40 years deserve credit for the honor of my re receiving this award. Thank you, Melissa McCoy, for editing the tribute film. Well done. And thanks to Jenny, Marika, and Tammy from the ACE office in guiding me through this process. I would also like to thank Dean Elizabeth Daly of the U.S. School of Cinematic Arts for giving me the opportunity to do my part in teaching the filmmakers of the future. It's a wonderful experience, and I couldn't ask for more. But I could ask to say hello to my granddaughter, Phoebe. <laughs> Is she out there? Phoebe, I love you, Phoebe. 